Houston, Texas for an SEC American showdown. It is the American Conference on ESPN. Nine unbeaten teams remaining in the country. We've got one of them, the mighty, mighty Houston Cougars against the young and talented LSU Tigers. Kevin Brown, John Thompson the third. It's a Houston team that was one of the great success stories in the country last year, made it all the way to the round of 32. They lost Rob Gray, but they might be even better. They might be better, and a big reason for that, Coach Sampson has a backcourt, a senior backcourt, that he can lean on with Corey Davis Jr. and Galen Robinson. And that unit is going against an LSU team with four fantastic freshmen and then a sophomore, Tremont Waters, leading the way. Tigers at 7-2 and two out of the SEC, a preseason top 25 team with losses to Florida State and Oklahoma State in the Advocare Invitational. And Houston still unbeaten. And unbeaten in a couple of games in this sparkling new facility, the renovated Hoffines Pavilion, now the Fertitta Center. This is game number three, a sold out crowd on hand. A late arriving crowd, but they are here as their Cougars win the tip. Kelvin Sampson's team at 8 and 0, coming off a 27 and 8 year, and led by Corey Davis and Galen Robinson in the backcourt as Cedric Alley turns it over on the first possession. Starters for LSU, you have the three freshmen who start, Javante Smart, Darius Dees, and Nas Reed, and we'll see Emmett Williams, a five-star freshman, off the bench. And that first possession is indicative of something you have to look at. Can LSU cause Houston to turn the ball over? This is Smart. Javante Smart with a miss. Tough rebound fought for, and a travel. After the rebound by Armani Brooks, our officials today, Doug Sermons, Ted Valentine, and Terry Oglesby. Coach Sampson, not a minute into the game. We got the jacket off already. He's working it. The tie cannot be far behind. <laughs> Kelvin Sampson, conference coach of the year last year, said his team hasn't been all that good so far, and yet they're 8-0. Reed likes to shoot from deep. A 6-10, five-star freshman misses a three. Galen Robinson Jr., four-year contributor at point guard for Houston. Robinson around the screen, guarded by Waters. Physical move, and Robinson will shoot two. You know, something's key to look at in the first two possessions. The first possession down there, Amani Brooks got a rebound. He ended up uh, traveling, and then Galen Robinson gets the rebound right there. Houston's guards, they want to rebound and push it out. Coach, Coach Wade talked about that earlier today. They want to win the first four seconds. If Houston's guards continue to rebound and blow out and push, it's going to be difficult for LSU to control those first four seconds as Coach Wade wants. I love what you noted there. Will Wade told us win the first four seconds of each possession offensively and defensively. Basically, that means stop the transition game, right? They have to stop Houston's transition. Houston is outstanding in their early offense. LSU scoring it at 82 plus per game this year leads the SEC in field goal percentage. They are a very good two-point shooting team, not great from three. Good bouncer by Reed to their leading scorer, Skyler Mays, drops it off to Reed for a slam in the first field goal. Nice poise by Reed right, right there. When he gets the ball in the block, Houston is going to come double him every time. That time he's dribbled out of it, made the good pass, and ended up coming back to him. Breon Brady with a post on Reed, and Brady is fouled. Reed picks up his first and a couple of early fouls against LSU. You know, in shoot-around today, Coach Wade is over there a little upset. In shoot-around today, he said the first several possessions, they're going into 24. They're going to go to Brady, um, and he's been right. 6'7", 260 senior from Saddleback Junior College in Arizona, second year Cougar. Is a Houston team, John, that's won 21 in a row at home, second longest streak in the nation, versus an LSU team that dating back to last year has lost eight in a row on the road. And we have to go back to last year because this is LSU's first road game this season. So you say that you're trying to jinx. You're trying to jinx more than I'm just setting up the stakes. <laughs> <or> letting, <laughs> letting us know. These are two pretty hefty streaks. Only South Dakota State, the mighty Jackrabbits, have a longer home win streak in Houston, and most of that 
came down the road at Texas Southern where they played their games last year and to start this year before this building was ready. Smart, off balance look, and the rebound won by Corey Davis and here comes Houston. In transition, an open three, and Cedric Alley delivers. There you see it again. Houston's guards rebounding, Corey Davis rebounds, initiates the offense, easy shot down the other end. Fair to say that was not a win in the first four seconds for Will Williams. No, it was not. And that's the third or fourth rebound for the Houston guards. There's Mays against this outstanding defensive Houston team. He missed it. Offensive rebound is smart. Thought about queuing up a three. Instead, Mays leads it long in the corner. Offensive rebound won by Darius Days. LSU a terrific offensive rebounding team. They're okay defensively, but great on the glass offensively. And he throws it away. Armani Brooks. No. And the rebound to Mays. No numbers. We'll take it into Davis anyway. And Davis is called for the foul. There you go, guards rebounding, blowing out. Houston's going to look to do that all night. It'll lead to early, easy opportunities. It's a Houston team that altogether plays at one of the slowest tempos in the nation, only ahead of Siena and Virginia in terms of possessions per game. But they pick their spots, and when they run, they're deadly effective. No, they're looking to attack right away. And then if they don't get an early opportunity, they're going to make you work on the defensive end. They're going to turn it over. They're going to run their sets. They're going to get the shot that they want every time down the court. And part of the reason for that slow tempo is just that long defensive posi uh, possessions. You do not get many easy shots against this Houston team. And you just said something that's very key. A lot of times people look at the scores and say, oh, they hold the ball. But what you don't realize is Houston's defense that caused the opposition to take so much time to score. Here's Brady off the Brooks. Miss Brady on Brady and the foul. Big fella came to work tonight. This is such a staple for the Houston Cougars. Fighting on the boards. They're keeping it alive, keeping it alive. Fabian White keeps it alive. Brady gets a chance to eat. Conference best plus seven. Rebound margin on average one of the best rebounding teams in the country last year They are not all that big But you wouldn't know it from the way they fight Brady completes the three Well size doesn't really have anything to do with how you rebound. I mean they're, they're gonna get in there and they're gonna fight it's, it's a staple and something they take pride in It's something that they know defend and rebound you, Coach Sampson's team always have and always will do smart just a long two. Armani Brooks, their leading rebounder with the board. Corey Davis around and out, and Cavell Bigby Williams grabs a strong rebound for LSU. Bigby Williams off the bench along with Daryl Edwards with the ball in his hands, who missed the last two games. Smart, got Brooks in the air. Down low, Bigby Williams, smothered and fouled. Defense strong early for Houston, trying to make it 22 in a row at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Audi. Well, it opened nearly 50 years to the day that Hoppines Pavilion opened the Fertitta Center, a $20 million donation from the owner of the Rockets, Tillman Fertitta, and the chairman of the UH Board of Regents. $60 million, the renovation. Wanted a marquee opponent to start. They got Oregon in here two Saturdays ago. The capacity has shrunk, but the noise level has increased. And for a program that is on the rise, this is the facility that Kelvin Sampson dreamed about when he took over five years ago, and this is the one he got. And this facility 
from a coach's perspective, from a fan's perspective, from a player's perspective, is, is top flight. It's, it's unbelievable, the, the, the setup, the layout here. And you couple that with the practice facility that's right next door, and, and you're looking at top flight facilities for Houston basketball. You practiced here with the Team USA, right? The practice facility next door? Yep, we had our training camp next door, multiple courts. I mean, it's just uh, a top flight, first, first class. We asked Kelvin Sampson about his vision when he took over, and he said, first of all, I, I needed somewhere to practice because there was no dedicated facility. They were practicing in Hoffine, so he said, I wanted that Guy Lewis practice facility, which is next door first. That was completed a couple of years ago. They played all their home games at Texas Southern's h and -E Arena last year, won every one of them, and the first few this year as well. Here's Fabian White, who lost it. Marlon Taylor with a takeaway for LSU. Emmett Williams, five-star freshman in the game now. 24 down low for LSU. Guarded by Bryson Gresham off the bench for Houston. Smart. A three ties the game. Some very good defensive possession right here by LSU. Can they finish? No. Open jumper, Fabian White Jr. And, and, and that's the beauty of Galen Robinson. The possession was not going as they wanted. At the end of the day, you put the ball in his hands, he makes a play for his teammates. Outstanding facilitator. Depending on this year, Galen Robinson Jr. could end up the second winningest player in Houston history. Son of a Cougar is Dad Galen Sr. There's a strong finish from LSU's Daryl Edwards. Robinson and Davis have played heavy, heavy minutes for Houston in the early going, both at 32 or more per game. Strong drive there, and Galen floats it over Williams. And Brooks also, all three of those guys are playing over 32 minutes a game. You expect that to change as the year goes on? I really don't. <laughs> you know, I think that those three, two of them are seniors. One of them is a, a, a sophomore that has really put time into his body. They're better with those three on the court. I, I, I think they're going to play those minutes. Saturday noon Eastern on ESPN, a sonic blockbuster and a rematch of one of last year's final four games. Number one, Kansas hosting Villanova at the Fog. Noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on ESPN. See if Kansas can manage to lose to Penn and or Villanova can manage to lose to Penn and beat Kansas in the same week. Judging by the madness this early season, why not? And, and I was getting ready to say, would, would either one be a huge surprise? <laughs> I would, that would change their ranking. Lose to Penn, beat Kansas in the same week as Robinson finishes in another floater. Robinson's much more aggressive offensively, looking for his own opportunities this year than he has been in the past. There's a foul on a three, shot by Marlon Taylor. Armani Brooks commits the foul, and Taylor, a very good shooter, will go to the line for three. Taylor did a great job right there drawing that foul. Brooks is usually pretty solid. And, and Taylor kicked his leg a little bit. And, you know, just he drew the foul. Brooks is a little frustrated right now. Coach Sampson is even more frustrated. Well, Taylor, who really needs to play a, a big role on this team, he's 8 of 17 from the line this year. He was a 40% three-point shooter in junior college last year. Panola College in Carthage, Texas. You know, and everyone talks about the four freshmen that are playing significant minutes for LSU. But coach, I mean coach, but Taylor is someone that 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 that, that, that they are looking at to grow also, but they're gonna need him as they head towards the conference play to really step up and be dependable. It's not been great so far, but Will Wade said he has to be a factor for us in SEC play, and that's why he's getting heavy minutes. Exactly. 33 minutes last time out, and went over Incarnate Word Sunday. 
Cedric Alley. Offensive rebound. Nate Hinton, the freshman, threw his body in the middle of the purple and gold, and Hinton draws the foul. And now you see the Cougars have their freshman in the game with, with Cedric Alley, redshirt freshman. And then you, you saw Hinton throwing his body in there, getting that rebound. Those are two freshmen for Houston that are not only going to play significant roles this year, but in the future of Houston basketball, these, these are two, going to be two stars. How do you like Nate Hinton? 11 for Houston. Love him. Loves Gastonia, North Carolina. He's tough. He plays both ends of the court. He score, defends. I love him. Nice job running the floor. Reed missed the dunk, but he was fouled by Bryson Gresham. And you see the you see the big fellas' athleticism getting down the court, and just as important, Tremont Waters can really pass the basketball. He garnered a lot of attention last year. You know, scored almost 16 points a game, but he's an elite, elite passer. Their leading assist man and the second most assists in LSU history in a season last year. Sets up Reed, who missed the first. You know, and, and in my opinion, Waters has done an outstanding job this year of trying to get the freshmen comfortable and get them acclimated and get them involved. Sooner or later, I think he's just going to have to let me. You know, I think I think he's forced some things and trying to get them involved. I mean, you're looking at someone that can dominate a game with his scoring, in my opinion, as well as his passing. And so they just got to put the ball in his hands to, as they head towards conference play and let Tremont make plays because he's, he's the lead. Reed one for two. Water should get a half assist for that. Lose assists when people go to the free throw line. I think we need to change that. Next time you're on the commission to revamp college hoops, can you work on that for me? And, and here we see Waters. Oh, Jerome with the denial, but Williams there to clean it up. That Waters, was second in the country in steals. It was Dejan Jerome just into the game who lost it, blocked Waters, and then Williams was in. Corey Davis wildly throws it into the courtside seats. Let's look at LSU to go inside right here. See if they can get Reed a basket. Mays instead. Missed a three. Offensive rebound for Williams. Skyler Mays with a shove on Giroux. An offensive foul. Will Wade screaming for a hold. He won't get it. His LSU team does have the lead. One of the leaders in the country in steals. Gets one right there. Great defensive effort. But the follow-up in transition for, for Emmett Williams. You will be found. This is the moment you truly all been waiting for. Number five recruiting class in the country in some metrics. Number three by ours, Naz Reed, Emmett Williams, Javante Smart, Darius Days. All four in the top 53. A couple of other teams in the country, Duke, Kentucky, could say that. The freshmen have produced just about half the points for LSU this year. And what's even more unique about that recruiting class, when you look at it, is Williams, Reed, and Days play the same position. And so he's able to convince those elite players, those top flight recruits, not only to, to come to LSU, but they to, to compete against and with each other at the same position. LSU 18 and 15 last year, 10 in the SEC. But picked to finish sixth in an excellent conference this year. Top 25 preseason. NBA Friday doubleheader tips off your weekend on ESPN. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. Two of the top four teams in the East, Pacers and Jimmy Butler and the Sixers. Then the Thunder and Nuggets, who are right there with Golden State. Top three teams in the West at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. NBA countdown starts it all at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And then Williams out of the game after his second foul. Darius Days has returned. 
and Cedric Alley Jr. to the line. And Alley splits the pair. Seven of nine at the line this year for Alley from Houston, redshirt freshman. Waters up top and Days throws it down. <laughs> Waters, period. Little fella's pretty good. That's eight players to score out of just 17 points for LSU. The only one who hasn't scored that's played is Waters. He's been too busy assisting. Tremont tried to get it to Reed out of bounds. Last touch by LSU. Tried to thread the needle right there. But you look at him. They run a little weave. He gets an old ball. You pay too much attention to him. His eyes are all over the place. His teammates understand that. More than five and a half assists per game for Waters. Robinson the miss. Brady's there with Reed in the air, and Breon Brady finishes strong again. He leads the way with six. A staple, I said this earlier, of the Cougars is rebounding. I mean, they throw it up, they're going after it. Brady's been a monster on the boards. Got, getting himself in better physical condition, he's lost 15 to 20 pounds from last year. You can tell in his activity level. You know, hopefully he keeps his fouls. Now, fouling was an issue for him last year, but he's moving his feet much better this year. That foul is Brady's first. He'll stay in the game. Waters a three. Got it. Now every LSU player in the game has scored. Tremont Waters, the last one of them, puts the Tigers back in front. Waters on the ball and Robinson. Elon Robinson off the right foot. Got his own rebound. Spun to the ground and we've got a travel. tell you what I don't know whether it's coming across to the viewers at home but this is a physical game you know these guys they don't mind bumping and touching each other when the ball goes up that's when the that's when the fun begins these are two aggressive teams right here that are going for it yeah it's a young LSU team but it is a physical one Will Wade knew how tough they needed to be to compete with Houston and he felt good about his team after a whole lot of practices, not many games in the last two weeks. Dave's way off the mark, and here is Hinton looking to run for Houston. Hinton with a spin, hit on the way up, he'll shoot two. There's another opportunity of Houston's guards, Houston's perimeter players, getting a defensive rebound and then creating an offensive opportunity. Javante Smart with a foul, his first. Eight fouls against LSU, but only Williams with two. Nate Hinton, maybe the highest regarded freshman so far in Kelvin Sampson's Houston tenure. You mentioned he's from Gastonia, North Carolina, which has produced a couple of standouts over the years, right? Hey, the two that come to my mind are James Worthy and Eric Sleepy Floyd. That's pretty good company. <laughs> Very good company. Preseason freshman of the year in the American Conference Hinton. Because of the early injury to Fabian White, Chris Harris been banged up. Hinton's played the two, the three, even a little bit of four early on. Tough physical kid. Kelvin Sampson said he added a physicality that they didn't have. Brady offensive rebound off the miss goes up strong. And the rebound cleared by Days, who is hit up high. Brady is hopping mad about this one. That would be his second foul. Well, well he did give a little acting right there, but hey, that's part of the game. Aggressive play, four guys going after it. Uh, he gave a little acting job, but it, but it, it did. That was a foul. 
I mean, he got the elbow to the head. Oh, oh, yeah. I think that's a legitimate call. <laughs> I didn't see that at first. I told you it was physical. It's another, just another day at the office. Did you like coaching in these games that were that physical? I coached in the Big East. Every game was just physical. <laughs> but did you like it? I loved it. Loved it. Another foul called. And that will put LSU in the one and one. That's against Bryson Gresham, his second. So Gresham and Brady have each picked up two. This was an issue for Houston last year. Foul trouble with the bigs, and it has been as well in the early going this year. You know, but but they much like last year, they always have someone that comes in. As Coach Sampson told us earlier, you know, White's injuries, he's he's not in in, in shape and form yet, but they're going to need him to show up tonight in spite of time that he's missed. Fabian White has returned to the game. Kelvin Sampson said, look, it's October for Fabian White. And that's okay. He was out because of a broken fifth metatarsal in his left foot until the Oregon game. They have to lift the load with nine and a half to go. Gresham and Brady on the bench for two. Houston team that is 8-0. Oh. One of nine unbeaten teams left in the nation. Right behind, as we all guessed, the Furman Paladins. Kansas gets Villanova on Saturday. And Houston fans don't want to see that second team on the grid, Michigan. That's the one that knocked him out last year on that Jordan Poole buzzer beater in the round of 32. I'd ask you the biggest surprise on this list, but it's, it's Furman. Let's be honest about that. It's Furman. So you, would, you, would, you wouldn't say St. John's? I would not say St. John's. Who's your, who's your biggest surprise besides Furman that's unbeaten right now? Um, I may say St. John's. Okay. Uh, you know, buff, the Buffalo team, to those that, that don't really know and follow college basketball, you might say them, but they're a veteran team. That's not really a surprise, to tell you the truth. And if you watched the Arizona game in the first round last year, you know how good Buffalo is. 100%. We went at West Virginia for them early this season. One point game here in Houston, and the fouls piling up early. Nate Hinton called for the bump there, his first. Well, well, you see, the players have to adjust. So we talked about, I talked about how physical this game was becoming. And, and it is, it was. And so what's happening now, you see the referees trying to, quote unquote, take control of the game. So it's, it's felt like the last five possessions, there's been a foul call at both ends of the court. So now the players have to adjust. Show your hands, move your feet, because the refs are calling everything at this point. Edwards got his own miss off the free throw and then fumbled the ball out of bounds. A couple of surprising things happen there. Ends up with a Houston possession. And a foul as Days tried to fight over against Alley. That's Darius Days second. So Days and Williams each with two for LSU. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but these players need to adjust. They're, they're, they're letting their emotions get carried. This, this is, a, this is a, a, an emotional game at this point, a physical game. Just stop touching each other because at, at any contact at this point, the rest are blowing the whistle. 18 fouls combined. We've seen 15 points from the free throw line out of the 42 scored in the game. And it's just under nine minutes left in the half. Alley four for six at the line. And the rebound pulled down by Taylor. Just an eight of 13 at the foul line. LSU seven for 12. Tide ball game between the SEC's Tigers and the American Conference's Cougars. Houston, the lone ranked team in the America. Smart. Thought he was bumped. Didn't get the call, but finished for the LSU lead. Three-time Mr. Basketball to the state of Louisiana, Javante Smart, most decorated high school player in that state's history among boys players. Robinson. This is White. A great shot blocker. Bigby Williams in there. White got it up. Rebound pulled down by Marlon Taylor. Edwards. Another off 
offensive rebound, LSU's Marlon Taylor. And that's a carry against Smart. You see, with Waters out of the game, Smart's now the primary ball handler. He's in attack mode. He's trying to get to the rim. As you said, he's done that three-time player of the year in Louisiana. He's used to it. And he's put the Tigers in front in Houston. Crossport royalty here at the Fertitta Center. Alex Bregman of the Astros got a Bregman Houston jersey, and um, he went to LSU. So that ended up in the stands, as did this baseball, which was a lovely souvenir delivered by Alex into the crowd. Oh, yeah, there's the LSU L. He knows his role. He's playing the heel. World Series winner, but tonight he is very much not a part of the city of Houston. He went to LSU. You can't get mad at the guy for that. No. Eric, he, he, I'm, I'm sure he loves the city of Houston. Yeah. But right now, he's an LSU guy. Eric Gordon is here. The Rockets, he received the Houston jersey and happily put, put it on. Well, if, if, if Houston were playing Indiana, we wonder how right. Eric would have responded. Well, we know how Eric would respond. <laughs> Brooks, Bigby Williams was there to clean it up. And a foul with Fabian White going over the top. And wouldn't you know it, Fabian White has two fouls, joining Brady and Gresham with the Houston Bigs all in early foul trouble. And, and, and you worded it beautifully. Thank you. Talking about how he cleaned it up right there. I mean, that, that was an uncontested layup. Um, I'm going in there, and all of a sudden, Vicky Williams comes in there and, and, and cleans everything up. So Chris Harris checks into the game. You see the foul trouble. Harris has not played in the last four. He's been banged up. But the 6'10 junior has to come in with everybody else in trouble. One and one still for LSU. Taylor hits the first. There'll be two free throws for both teams the rest of the way. And the way this is going, this is going to be a long first half. Because that whistle's blowing every trip down the court. You don't have any plans, right? None at all. Sit here and enjoy this rock fight. That is a foul. Cabell Bigby Williams over the back. Bigby Williams with his second. We're just going to start calling out the players that don't have two fouls by this point. And, that, and now, now you start to wonder which program is working on their foul shooting the most. Because clearly that's going to play a part in this game. Well, it's L playing a part in this game. LSU shoots it a little better on the year. 73.5%, Houston 71. Alley back at the line where he has feasted. Cedric Alley now 5 of 7 from the free throw line today for Houston. As Reed will return for LSU. Nas Reed replacing Bigby Williams. Reed with only one foul. Alley gets both. Houston has hit just six shots in the field. LSU seven. Living at the line for both teams. Waters back in the game for the Tigers. Reed. He loves to shoot that. We saw that at shoot-around today, but he's not been great from deep this year. Davis had nowhere to go. Reed went straight up. Here is Skyler Mays. Missed it. Out of bounds off Brooks. You know, you said Reed can make that shot, but, you know, they're going to, they're, Houston's content if he keeps taking that shot. I mean, he's much more dangerous down on the block than he is taking that shot. 35.7% from deep on the year coming in. Struggled a bit of late offensively. Hand off here, and Waters' three is over the basket. And the team shooting well from deep so far. LSU not a great three-point shooting team on the year. Houston a bit better. Well, at this point, Houston's turnovers are hurting them. You know, they, they have six baskets made and eight turnovers. Seven baskets made now. But they have more turnovers than they have field goals made. So, you know, several of them have been unforced. Just protect the ball. Get a good shot every time. 
That was Robinson for a long two. Maybe last year you leave him that open, he won't shoot it. He has really upped his offensive game. And he goes for the steal here, deflected it. Ball stays with LSU. He's a leader. He's a winner. You know, you, you talked about it. He's been, I, clearly spent a lot of time in the offseason working on his shot, working on his his offense from a scoring perspective. And so, like, there were times last year where people didn't guard him. You're not going to be able to do that this year. Reed into the corner, Mays. A three. Skyler Mays, LSU's leading scorer and maybe best all around player this year, puts the Tigers back in front. Hinton was hit, no foul. Here's Waters, so dangerous in transition. Looked like he was trying to get it to Mays, but there were a couple of players in the way. Robinson has the steal. And the tie just came off, Coach Sampson. I am surprised it, it, genuinely it took this long. I, I am too. It came off in magnificent fashion, I must <laughs> say, if you get, you get a shot. Hit the three. Missed it. Nice box out by Reed. Jermont Waters. And they shuffle the feet. That's a travel. And another LSU turnover. Sixth turnover for LSU. We talked about Reed taking those threes. Now you see the big fella give a little show shot, put it down. Excellent pass out to Mays. Splash. One of the things that has surprised people about Reed is how good of a passer he is. 6'10 freshman. Well, and, and, and I talked about him not needing to take all those shots outside, but he's taken enough that now when he gets it, people have to come out and they play him so he can make plays like he just did. You don't need to shoot it every time. Put it down, make a play off the dribble. Robinson, tough finish. Rebound Harris. He went up strong with nobody there, or he pump fake with nobody there, and then finished to tie the game again. Yeah, but that's the big B. Williams effect. I mean, he's blocked so many shots. Harris is alone. He's still pump faking. Reed threw himself into trouble there. No over the back foul called. Simply out of bounds. Houston ball. Rhythm and flow still somewhere to be found here at the Fertitta Center. Corey Davis, quiet night for him. Out to Brooks, who's been very quiet tonight. He has not scored yet. And Brooks is stripped by Waters. Waters on the break. Hit by Davis, he finishes strong. Second in the country in steals, Jamont Waters. He has quite a few tonight already. Averaging three per game. New Haven, Connecticut. Terrific second year player for the Tigers. Davis around Edwards. Nice lefty finish. The senior Corey Davis Jr. <laughs> Man, this is fun. These guys are going at each other. This is old school. Who's going to survive? Who's going to crumble? Who can do it for 40 minutes? Reed tries to slam, and Harris hit him on the way up. Tremont Waters does it at both ends. See the scrappiness, the tenacity, and then a very, very tough layup with Corey Davis trailing him right there. Young man, you know very well, obviously. You recruited him to Georgetown, New Haven, Connecticut. You got to know him, saw him as a high school player. What was it that, as a coach, drew you to Tremont Waters? Well, we're seeing a lot of it tonight. I mean, I think he's someone that, from an offensive perspective, I don't think there's much that he cannot do. He can shoot, outstanding shooter with deep, deep range. Very good passer. You know, his vision is you know, something you can't coach. You just can be able to see. And he has a competitive spirit that allows him to overcome what some may see as a deficiency in his size. He's so competitive. He's just a good basketball player. He can do everything. CC all freshman team declared for the NBA draft, said he was never going to go, just wanted feedback. He's worked on his body and his diet before this second LSU year. Hinton finds Harris. Harris blocked by Reed. And Reed thought he went straight up, but he's called for a foul. 
Nas Reed with his second. Foul trouble mountainous for both teams in the early going. This is one of those games you're going to go to halftime and both coaches are going to be upset with the fouls. Both coaches can be upset with how the game's being officiated and they both may be correct. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. L-O-G, I see I'm feeling free. I'm finna bring it now. I get up. Number 17, Villanova versus number one, Kansas. Saturday at noon on ESPN. Kansas number one and unbeaten. They have struggled to get past some teams. New Mexico State recently. Some close, close calls for KU. And they get Nova noon Eastern. 11 a.m. Central on Saturday. Well, if you're just joining us, you've missed lots and lots of fouls. A whole lot of players in foul trouble with two. Three bigs with two fouls for Houston. Four players with two fouls for LSU. Cedric Alley has nine points to lead the way. Six at the line. And Houston has been a bit sloppy with the ball. That is Chris Harris Jr. One for six at the free throw line this year as he misses the first. And we're looking at, you know, uh, LSU team is taking 16 foul shots and a Houston team that now is taking 17 foul shots with three and a half minutes left in the first half. Waters, one hand try, that was reckless. Luckily, Smart tracks it down. Smart trying to go coast to coast. Knocked out of bounds, stays with LSU, 14 to shoot. Chris. Great as Waters has played this year, he is averaging more than four turnovers per game. Yeah, he, he's, he's forcing a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that some, sometimes he has to shoot the ball where he's trying to pass the ball. You know, maybe a little bit too unselfish in, in certain situations. Waters, Harris comes out on the screen. Mays, good drive, couldn't finish. Williams in the game with two fouls. Had the ball taken by Hinton. Hinton, Spinarama. Nice find! Harris, throw down. <laughs> Smart. Fouled. Score the goal. It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You have one freshman with a rebound, pushing it. Beautiful spins, dropping it off. That's hitting, creating four teams and one. And then come right back, another freshman. Comes right back, gets the end and one. Down the other end, small. Two freshmen making plays right there, ladies and gentlemen. Foul against Brooks, his second. Alley replaces him. You know, you said something a few minutes ago. You talked about rhythm and flow. If, if either one of these teams can settle into the, a rhythm and or flow, right with this last two and a half minutes left, that could be key in this game. Hinton throws it up and in. All right, how does LSU find that rhythm? What's their strength here? Maybe it's that. I was going to say, <laughs> as you're talking, it might be Javante Smart. They have to stay in attack mode. They have to keep going to the basket, not necessarily play side to side. Smart leads away with 10, five of the last two trips. Davis, rebound ahead. Back out to Waters to slow it down. Long pass by Waters, and then Davis fouled Taylor. Marlon Taylor to the line on Corey Davis's second foul. Coming up on the E Trade halftime report, we will check in with Phil Murphy and Seth Greenberg. They'll look ahead to Saturday's slate, including game will be at Tennessee, Memphis, and Kansas. Villanova. Very excited for that one. Sold out in the FedEx Forum. Noon Eastern, 11 Central on ESPN2.
That is opposite the Villanova, Kansas game on ESPN. Oh, that game's going to be electric. We're going to have some more fun down in Memphis on Saturday. Sold out crowd here in the Fertitta Center, and you add about 11,000 seats to the sellout in Memphis. They want to see Penny Hardaway, the new Tigers coach, and they want to see the Tennessee team that moved up to number three after a win over Gonzaga a few days ago. And Taylor hits two, and LSU has stretched the lead to four. The largest lead for the Tigers in this first half. A much stiffer challenge than a young, talented Oregon team that came in here two weeks ago and was really out-muscled for the opening whistle. Houston turns it over again. Well, you know, this LSU team, you know, they're young. You know, but as Coach Wade said in shooting, they're competitive, they're tough. They, they thought that they'd be able to match Houston's toughness. And you're not going to beat Houston unless you're aggressive, unless you're tough, unless you match their physicality. And so far, both of these teams are going right back and forth at each other, which is why we have such a close game, such an exciting game. And it's an LSU team that really needs an early signature win in some respects. Their two toughest tests they lost, Florida State, Oklahoma State, and Disney. Their best win is over a good UNC Greensboro team, but a win at home over UNCG. Taylor finishes strong, and LSU's largest lead is now six. And you know what they're doing? We talked about this early. They're winning the first four seconds. They've, LSU has gotten several transition baskets. That's what Coach Wade wanted. Win the first four seconds. Ante Smart leads the way with 10 for LSU. The freshman has been outstanding the last couple of minutes. You know, he's taking it upon himself. Let me go out and we find a way to get a basket. He's in attack mode. We talked about it. Louisiana's played a year, three years in a row. He's in attack mode. The pride of Scotlandville Magnet. Off the Houston timeout, Corey Davis finishes. LSU does have a timeout to use it or lose it timeout. Smart! Again, a chance for three for Javante Smart. In attack mode, getting to the paint, making plays over and over and over again. Nice hesitation. First four seconds. Strong, strong body control right there. Opportunity for the enemy. The old fashioned. It's for Ernie. And the foul is the third against Corey Davis. A huge late foul in the half. And if you question why was he out there, half the Houston team has two. Somebody's got to play. And that really hurts Kelvin Sampson here at the end of the first. We asked Will Wade who would have to be tough, who were his tough guys in a game where he knew he would need toughness. He said Emmett Williams, who's been limited with foul trouble, and Javante Smart. It has been the Smart show. Mays at three. He gets it for a double-digit LSU lead. Win the first four seconds. A timeout taken by Will Way, the use it or lose it timeout to set up his defense on a 12-2 Tiger run. And a lot of it, if not all of it, has been with early offense. A lot of it has come off the fact that they are only allowing Houston one shot. Houston, who so much of their offense is predicated on crashing the boards and getting second and third shots, which they were doing early in the game, that, that has not happened as of late. LSU has limited them to one shot, and they got out in transition and done what Coach Wade wanted, win the first four seconds. That is a spirited crowd here, and a whole lot of folks in purple and gold have made the trip. About a four-hour drive from Baton Rouge to Houston. This is one of LSU's largest alumni bases. And they were roaring during the timeout. Shot clock turned off. No Brooks, no Davis in the game right now with a foul trouble for Houston. Robinson. And a carry is called with three seconds.
seconds to go in the half. 12th Houston turnover of the first 20 minutes. Coach is not going to be happy about that. LSU gets Waters back in the game to see if he can create something. Thankfully, Kelvin Sampson has already taken off the jacket and the tie and has really nothing else legitimate to shed. Here is Waters. Tremont Waters. Side iron to end the first half. And Kelvin Sampson takes the basketball and throws it to the ground in frustration. Uh, first half of disgust for his Cougars. LSU ends the half on a 12-2 run as the Tigers look to knock out one of the nine remaining unbeatens in Division I. After the break, Phil Murphy and Seth Greenberg join us in the studio to discuss this Saturday slate. Go in-depth on Tennessee and Kansas. Here in Houston, it's LSU by 10. To knock the Houston Cougars from the ranks of the unbeaten, 45-35, boys from Baton Rouge at the break. Kevin Brown, John Thompson the third. It is a Houston team that has not allowed 70 points in a single game this year. They're on pace for 90 allowed right now. Well, you know, they have to control their turnovers. You know, it's something that that, that first half was, was uncharacteristic for, for, for Coach Sampson's team. He had three assists and 12 turnovers. And so, you know, a lot of them are just unforced turnovers. You know, you know at this point LSU is coming in with active hands. You have to protect the ball on penetration. But th they can't go through a half. Their, 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 their season high for turnovers is 15. And right now, at the start of the second half, they have 12 already. So if they can protect the ball a little better, you know, their front court sat most of the latter part of the half. And, and now they can hopefully control the boards from their vantage point a little better than they did. And we'll see. The front court set because of foul trouble. A whole lot of fouls in the first half. 12 for LSU, 13 for Houston. Breon Brady, Armani Brooks, Bryson Gresham, Fabian White with two, Corey Davis with three. For LSU, Naz Reed, Darius Days, Emmett Williams, and Cavell Bigby Williams all with two fouls. Reed to start the second half, flips it in over Brady, and LSU now has its largest lead of a dozen. And once again, you see Reed starting on the perimeter, using his athleticism, putting the ball on the floor, getting to the rim. Five-star number 12 in the ESPN 100, but he just picked up his third foul. And once again, the start both halves, Houston you know, has, has a history of going inside to Brady. And first possession, they go in, they draw a foul, look, and go right back to him. Davis, only four points for Davis, none for Brooks. They're two leading scorers in the first half. Armani Brooks, he'll force a deep one and miss it. Rebound grab by Tremont Waters. Brooks 0 for 5 in the game, the American leader in threes. In the corner, an open three for Mays. Make it smart, he didn't connect, but he was fouled. Cedric Alley picks up his first. And Smart, who had 13 in the first half, will head to the line. Well, now, now let's, in spite of everything else that's going on, and we can talk about turnovers, and we can talk about winning the first four seconds, you know, but if Davis and Brooks, one or both of them don't break out this half, then Houston's not going to win. I mean, they need those guys to score points. And so to go through with one with zero points, one with three, you know, Houston's just not going to win on top of everything else that's going on. Two free throws for Smart. Meanwhile, he has the first two. His season high 16. He's hit that number three times, and he'll match it with a free throw here. 82% at the line coming in. Smart five for five at the stripe, and LSU is threatening to run away with this thing early. Tigers were a bit of an underdog coming in, not playing like it. Good hands by Mays, who poked it away twice from Davis. Very active hands. And, you know, I said the last possession, they're going to go in to Brady, and they're forcing him a little bit right there. Wasn't there. Nine unbeatens left in the country. Who will be the last? Houston has work to do to stay in the mix. Robinson off his misses foul. 
And one thing you know, Houston's not going anywhere. They're going to they're gonna scrap. They're going to fight. You know, you're looking at them down 15 right now to start the second half. But they're not going to go anywhere. Well, they have the advantage of LSU foul trouble. Darius Days joins Reed with three fouls. Robinson, 14 of 22 at the line coming into tonight. Now two of three in the game. And here come the substitutions for Will Wade. And he'll keep him come flowing in and out. Two players with three fouls check out. Reed and Days. Emmett Williams is in. And Marlon Taylor. Taylor was a plus 14 in the first half. And we're not talking about his jersey number. When the Tigers were on the court, they outscored Houston by 14 with Taylor out there. And, and, and maybe he listened to Coach. You know, Coach... Coach said they need him. We talked about this in the open. They need him to step up. They need, you heard about the freshman, they need him to be a part of the mix. Waters hit the deck, back on his feet with the ball. Three ball handlers in the game, and Waters handles for a three point try with a foul underneath against Houston. And there you see, you know, you see Brady, and that's two of his fouls so far in this game. You know, have been what we may call cheap fouls, unnecessary fouls. He's extending the arm, he's going after guys. It's one thing to be physical, which he is, but but that, you know, those are two unnecessary fouls. His third total, he leads the game. Waters throws it wildly off the glass. Foul against Houston. Ted Valentine with a late whistle. Hasn't given the signal yet. He's just given the shrug to Kelvin Sampson and now signals for Corey Davis his fourth foul with 1822 to go. Kellen Sampson, Kelvin's son and assistant, just ran over to his dad to tell him Corey's got four. And Nate Hinton will replace him. Who knows for how long? That's a tough break, obviously, for Houston. His momentum just carried him. One could say his momentum just carried him under Taylor right there. But Corey Davis on the bench with four fouls. This young Armani Brooks is going to have to step up. Robinson is going to have to step up. They're going to have to find offense from somewhere. Allen had a shot tipped by Taylor with a block. And we get a foul against LSU. They are piling up early in the second half. Tremont Waters with the foul, his second. Two minutes into the second half, and both teams have three fouls already. Thirty-one fouls in the game. Here's Brooks. That's as clean of a look as he's had tonight. Offensive rebound won by Hinton. And he gets it back from Gresham. Robinson step back. No. Rebound Brooks. LSU has struggled defending on the glass at times this year. Florida State had 22 offensive rebounds in the Seminoles win a couple of weeks back. Robinson denied. That's a goal 10. Williams got it on the way up. Well, you know, we, we talk about how is Houston going to get offense picking with Davis out. You know, go go get it. Good call right there. That, that's a goal 10. But in that possession, they got two, three offensive rebounds. That's another one. Can we get some second shots? Can we get some transition baskets? They're, they're not going to be able to just manufacture offense in their half-court offense. Off the maze miss. Here is Robinson. Trying to cut this to a single-digit lead again. And he calls off the Gresham screen. Outstanding transition defense by LSU right there. LSU has to focus on that for the rest of the game. Don't let Houston make any runs. That, they're going to make runs if they start getting transition baskets, if they start getting second shots. Hinton 
step back. Out of bounds to LSU. LSU in this game, for, for a team that came in as more of an offensive unit, this year really has defended well. They've defended well and they've rebounded well. Second worst team in the SEC by defensive efficiency coming into tonight. But Houston sits just 1-3. Wild pass on the hands of Williams from Taylor. The steal for Robinson. Brooks on the step back. Another miss. He still has not scored. Robinson tried to draw the charge. Good no call there. Very good no call right there. Smart play by Robinson to try that one. Worth a shot. Worth a shot. With a finger taped up on the right hand, Galen Robinson guarding Waters. Nice find. Taylor denied by Gresham and foul. Oh, baby. Outstanding pass by Waters right here. Penetrates, nice little hezzy dish. Meet me upstairs. Kevin Sampson told us before the game, we haven't played that well, and we're 8-0. They might be 8-1, having not played that well in his estimation. This has just been an off night. <laughs> you know, and if they haven't played well yet, they definitely are not playing well tonight. You know, they're... they're with the fouls, with the turnovers, you know, with, with your two big guns not being able to score tonight. And, and, and one of them, Davis, is on the bench with four fouls. And so it's not over. It's a long time left. You know that, that Houston is going to jump it up and make, and make this game as ugly, if not more ugly, as we go down the stretch here. But there's something has to start to go their way soon. No Davis in the game. Picked up that fourth foul of the 18-22 mark of the half. Brooks yet to score. Finally, Armani Brooks gets going with a one-footer. All right, let's see if he can warm up. Waters through the contact. If there's any contact right now, it's just going to be called a foul. They're, they're, exactly. And Tremont did a great job right there of... of Flailing a little bit. Nice little hezzy. He goes up right there. You know, not, not too much com contact right there, but hey, that's the way the game's being called. Robinson took issue with that one, and you can understand why he took issue, but it is called his first foul. And some might say that's just a smart play. By Tremont Waters. He knows how the game is being called. So let's go in there, draw some contact, and I'm going to the line. Have the pair. LSU has shot 27 free throws in the game, 35 field goals. Nice hard screen by Gresham Sprung. Robinson leads to a three from Alley. Offensive rebound hitting and a foul on the floor. Noon Eastern, 11 Central on Saturday. This is a sonic blockbuster. It's Villanova, the defending national champions against Kansas, the team whose season ended in the Final Four at the hands of Jay Wright's squad last year. From Allen Fieldhouse on ESPN and wherever you are on the ESPN app. Foul against Tremont Waters, his third. It was still one three-pointer made in the game, and it's Brooks with a second straight two. And that's a good sign for, for, for the Cougars. Brooks, who hadn't done anything, two baskets in a row. Get the lead back to ten. Not that the crowd ever left, but they're showing they're back here. No waters in the game. It's Smart who handles. And he has his pass taken away by Gresham. Brooks for three. Showing up late might be better than not showing up at all. But <laughs> Brooks is, is here.
Puts it down. Pull up two. He's in his rhythm now. Defense leads to offense. Armani Brooks is here, baby. Armani Brooks' impact negligible. Non-existent in the first 24 and change. In the last minute plus, he scored three in a row. He's, he's, he's warming up right when they needed him to warm up. You know, can he keep it going? Can they keep it going? We're going to have fun coming down the stretch here, baby. This place is loud. It's hopping. The good thing, though, you can look over at the Tigers bench, and they're just as excited as the Cougars are right now. A sellout in the third game in the Fertitta Center, and it feels like we may have just stumbled onto one of the great home court advantages out of nowhere in college basketball. 21 home wins in a row, 19 at Texas Southern, and they are loud in this new building. Mays missed the three. Days cleans it up. No foul on a contact. Gresham hits the deck with a travel. Hey, he was pushed. He fell. He traveled. I mean, things go bump in the night. <laughs> things are going bump tonight, baby. If Kelvin Sampson had a voice before that last play, it's certainly gone now. Hayes checks out of the game. Nas Reed returns. Still no waters for LSU with three fouls, and that was almost a travel against Mays. Almost, huh? There's a trap <laughs> against Reed! <laughs> Well, it is hard to think in here when this crowd gets rolling. And, 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 and we, we got the fans and the officials having conversations. We got Smart up in Brooks' face having a little conversation off the ball. A lot of talking between Smart and Brooks, mainly from Smart. Alley, strong drive. He'll go to the line. A couple of players in there in foul trouble, and that's Reed. He picks up his fourth for LSU. Coach Sampson's trying to get Brooks' attention and tell him to calm down. Brooks and Smart are going at each other. Verbally, physically. You see Smart coming over <laughs> to the huddle. Just check in on, on what Coach Sampson is saying to Brooks. That's a good trash talk right there. You soak up as much information as you can. Water's still on the bench for LSU. He'll check in after Alley hits the second. Waters will replace Taylor. Remember, this is all without Corey Davis, who has four fouls and is currently being told to sit down by Terry Oglesby. 13-3 Houston run. Water. Here comes Brooks. Houston can make this a one-score game. Hinton. Offensive rebound, Brooks. Out of bounds, Houston ball as Brooks threw it off the leg of Smart. You know, we, we talked about how those two are going at each other, Brooks and Smart. You know, in, in the course of that, Smart is just denying Brooks. Brooks hit three in a row, and now Smart just that doesn't want him to touch the ball. Off the mark and a three there as Brooks got a look. Here is Mays. Houston winners of 21 straight at home. LSU has lost eight in a row on the road. Smart out of control. Robinson whipped. Waters. Big B. Williams clearly fouled from behind by Gresham. Man, it's so loud and you can't hear the whistle. <laughs> the fans are on their feet around the arena. You know, that play right there, two or three players fumbled the ball. Robinson almost had a steal, bounces right to Waters. He goes in there, fumbles it. 
Bigby Williams ends up with it. Bigby Williams 11 for 19 this year at the Lions. 3-4-3 three, three today. He has been an enormous lift. A redshirt senior, a transfer from Oregon. One of the leading shot blockers in the conference at more than two and a half per game. A rim protector. And we, we saw it earlier in the, in the first half. Even when he's not in there, you know, he's, he affects the people penetrating they're looking for. Him. The big man stroke at the line, four for four tonight. Lead was down to three, back up to seven for LSU. Brooks. Alley all alone, his defender slipped, could not make him pay. White with a one-man tip drill kept it alive. Houston still with just two made threes on 15 tries in the game. And Waters knocks away the Robinson pass. Well, right now, particularly with Davis on the bench, I mean, Brooks, they have guys that can make threes. But Brooks is the only shooter out there, and LSU knows that. They're really staying home at him on everything. You know, and in and, and the last last couple of possessions, you know, Alley ended up open, Hinton ended up open. And those guys can make those shots, but not consistently just yet. LSU third worst three-point defense in the SEC. Again, the number two for 15 right now, though, from deep for Houston. Hinton, that's a three, and that's a foul going against Houston as Taylor hit the deck. Foul against Cedric Alley. The air of the fog. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. L-O-G, I see I'm feeling free. I'm finna bring it now. I get up. Number 17, Villanova versus number one, Kansas. Saturday at noon on ESPN. Last time these two played, Villanova bludgeoned Kansas in the Final Four. They bludgeoned everybody in the tournament last year en route to the second national title in three years. Over the last four seasons, nobody's been better than Nova. Kansas close behind. That's why it's a sonic blockbuster. Sonic blockbuster, and you look at that last, that bottom graphic right there. As you said, both of these teams have bludgeoned a lot of opponents the last few years. One and one already for LSU. Just eight minutes, two seconds into the half. And Marlon Taylor hits the first. You look at that number that just popped across your screen. 749 without a field goal for LSU. And yet, <laughs> Tigers keep getting to the line. And they lead by nine. You go almost eight minutes without a field goal. And it, it might not matter if you're going to the foul line every time down the court. With 23 of them. 23 of their 57 points from the strike. Kenton. White with a jumper. Yes. Houston hanging around without Corey Davis on the bench since early in the second half with four fouls. Waters trying to draw the foul on Robinson. And that's out of bounds to Houston. You know, and if, if Houston, we talked about Davis being on the bench. You know, Coach Sampson's going to have to make the decision of when you come back with Davis. I think it's at least a few minutes now. And can Houston still keep chipping away? Robinson got around Big Blue Williams. He came back to help. Falls on the deck. Waters trying to get a timeout. Instead, we have a travel. Things go bump in the night. <laughs> a lot of contact right there. Now, Brooks has been open looping around on this out of bounds play two or three times in a row. Let's see if he gets it again. He yes, does. He, yes, he does. Missed a two. Houston ball. Last touch by Bigby Williams. And that's because of Hinton's 
aggressiveness on the boards. He's really crashing the offensive board. Some he's been able to, 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 to corral, others he's kept alive. Robinson rolls, finishes on the floater. Five point game. Galen Robinson with 13. foul against LSU. Javante Smart. And, and, and I think you saw a little showmanship right there by Galen Robinson. And Smart goes right back to Brooks. What's the good matchup here for Houston? I think that the good matchup is just putting the ball in Robinson's hands and letting him create. And he's gotten easy shots for his teammates. That's what he does. You know, instead of searching for a matchup, just spread the floor, get spacing, and, and, and let Robinson get in there and find who's open. Well, Houston is starting to dominate the offensive glass. Marlon Taylor picks up his second foul. Offensive rebound, 16 for Houston. Well, we talked about that. You know, for Houston, you know, when they were down 15, we said, okay, they have to manufacture baskets some other kind of way. They can't just be in their half-court offense. It has to be in transition. It has to be on the offensive glass. And they've, they've methodically done that. And now all of a sudden, the 15 is now down to five with 10 minutes left. Alley one and one, both teams in the bonus. Alley has... Onto the line now for 11 free throw attempts, hit nine. Both teams in the bonus with over 10 minutes to go in the game. By the way, great hair for Cedric Alley Jr. We're told that runs in the Alley family. He keeps track of it himself, unlike Rob Gray's man bun last year, which Kelvin Sampson's daughter Lauren contributed to. No Rob Gray, Cougars 8-0 no anyway. They're going to get it back on a double dribble by Waters. And here come, <laughs> here come the Cougar fans again, baby. This is this only the third game of this building. Great environment. Feels like it's been here for decades. Robinson, one-point game. Young man is a winner. Young man is a winner. Smart so good in the first half. Tough drive. Williams with a follow. Missed it. The tip in there from Darius Davis. Best but, offensive rebounder for LSU. Yeah, that kind of looked like FIBA basketball right there. We kind of take it off the rim a it little sure bit. sure did. <laughs> I think that was still on the rim. LSU goes to a quick possession of zone. Just to try to break Houston's rhythm. See how long they stay with it. Shot clock down to four. White got the jumper. That's the third jumper he's hit from that little corner right there. Maybe this is the game where Fabian White starts to feel it again. They go to the season. Then the on ball for Waters right here. How did he see Williams? Beg your pardon, Dave. And it's a three off an outstanding feed by Waters. Tremont needed that. He had a couple bad turnovers the previous few possessions. Robinson into the pick and roll, finds White. White finishes, plus a foul. Darius Days picks up his fourth foul. And White can make this a one-point game again. Right there. I, I, I say that's great execution. You put the ball in Robinson's hands, let him make a play. Outstanding pass. Fabian White. Nice soft touch right there for the big fella. Finding his rhythm, as you talked about earlier. Looks like he might need to respirate a little bit. 
he's going to use all 10 seconds on this foul shot. Surgery in June. Broken fifth metatarsal on his left foot. Played against Oregon a couple of weeks ago. And White will take a seat. He'll get a deserved break to a big ovation. And LSU's going to need a lot more of this. Tremont Waters. Ladies and gentlemen, that passes with his left hand across the court. He's out of the game right now, though. Day's still in there with four fouls. Smart will handle. Weave to an on ball for Mays. Smart. Five to shoot. It's Williams. Emmett Williams smothered by Gresham. Here comes Hinton for the lead. The Cougars, we said it earlier, are not going anywhere. From 15 down in the second half. With Corey Davis on the bench. Three-pointer miss from Taylor. Rebound to Brooks. Last lead was 31-30 for Houston. Robinson, followed by White Hill, go to the line. What a surge by the University of Houston Cougars. We're not going anywhere, baby. Smothering defense, aggressive defense, health defense. Give me that leads to a breakaway. The Cougars are here. Pick a 50 to 35 lead, 56 seconds into this half. Houston has responded with a 28-12 run. And we may have stumbled onto one of the great home court advantages already in college basketball. I know it's the third game of the Fertitta Center. They knocked about a thousand seats in a Hop Heinz Pavilion, raised the roof, but it didn't matter. Every seat is a good seat. We haven't been to many buildings this loud. And again, the, the paint's just drying on this thing. No, you're 100% correct. This environment is unbelievable. You know, and it starts with the guys that are on the court. I mean, it's, it's right. you're, down, you're down 15, you don't go anywhere. One of your leaders is on the bench, has been on the bench, you don't go anywhere. You just start making hustle plays, tough plays. And so now it's about Coach Wade and this young LSU Tiger team. How are they going to respond? They're young. They're talented. They haven't been in these situations together. You know, it's, it's a two-point game, seven to some change. Let's see how both teams respond. Last time Houston lost at home was mid-March of 2017. 78-75 in the NIT to the Akron Zips. Reeves pass deflected. Takeaway for Nate Hinton. LSU's 15th turnover. What do we have here? We have some debris, ice. Uh, some ice on the court. Eagle-eyed Ted Valentine spots the ice. We'll get that cleaned up. Yeah, and, and, and the, the Wiley veteran, Coach Sampson, is going to sneak in a timeout right here. You know, it, we, 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 would we expect anything else but a little bit of debris coming from the stands, from the fans? <laughs> right, the in front right of now? Tillman Fertitta, whose namesake adorns this arena. Well, look, this is already an amazing home court advantage. It wouldn't be if Kelvin Sampson hadn't done what he's done with this program. They're trying to get to the NCAA tournament in back to back years for the first time since 83 84. Won their first tournament game last year in more than three decades. And if Jordan Poole's shot doesn't go in for Michigan, I mean, honestly, who knows how far Houston goes? Because they would have been the higher-seeded team in the next three games if it went that far. And I know ifs and buts and all that, but it was a Houston team that was a miracle shot away from the Sweet 16 and had a chance to keep climbing. And, and you know this, or you remember this, it was a Houston team that I thought was going to keep climbing. And I think that this group potentially, you lose Rob Gray from last year's team, their leading scorer, who made who made a lot of plays for them. But this group is still growing and has potential to be significantly better in the very near future than they are right now. 
There's Tillman. There's us. $20 million donation, the largest individual donation ever given to the University Athletic Department. And we, you know what that means? What's that? They're going to make sure that floor in front of him is good and dry. <laughs> yeah. now, it's been about 10 minutes if that, was that in front we've of been anybody cleaning else, the floor already. We're done. You know, we're going to get the blowers out here to blow it off. we got Valentine helping out. <laughs> Man, that, that floor is going to be spotless before we start this game. <laughs> Look at Teddy scuffing the floors. That's great work by the veteran Ted Bell, the Wiley veteran. He, he knows who's sitting right there. <laughs> Don't think he doesn't. Don't think he doesn't. 20 million doesn't buy you what it used to these days. <laughs> Need another 20 for the waterproof floors. All right, back to basketball. Two-point lead for Houston under seven to play. Robinson attacks and delivers. Give the ball to Robinson and just let him make plays, man. It's, it's simple. Still no Tremont Waters for LSU. Williams post feed to Reed, working on Brady. Got the foul, got the basket. Alex Bregman loves it. LSU with a chance to cut it to one. Well, and. and, and and you see the big fella going down on the blocker. A nice flash into the middle right there. Takes his time. Boom. And then Robinson. Just give him the ball. He's very unselfish. He can get to the rim. LSU threw a quick 1-3-1 one, one at Houston. Coming out of the, the wet floor gate. Didn't matter. We're the ball already Robinson. giving it a gate yeah, nickname, giving huh? Yeah, it a gate. Why not? Wet floor gate. Maybe we'll get cup holders the next time Houston takes the floor. First of a seven-game homestand for the Cougs. They host St. Louis, a good team out of the A-10 Sunday. Give the ball to Robinson. He gives it to Brooks, and Brooks cans a three. Reed likes that shot, got Brady in the air. Down low, Williams and Brady with four fouls came over to block it cleanly. That's the offense, spacing, ball in Robinson's hands are spacing. As a reminder, Corey Davis has been out of the game for 13 minutes with four fouls. Hit and didn't realize the shot clock. Brooks fumbled it, and this should be an easy bucket for Smart. And it is. Javante Smart with a new season high of 18. Waters back in. Lost track of the shot clock right there. Didn't realize it was running down. Brooks loses it. He's not been the finest game for Waters with the five turnovers, two assists, but he's back out there with his team within three. Brady sealing off Williams. Reed fouled by Allen. Saturday bowl season begins on ABC with a great doubleheader. Miak and SWAC champs, North Carolina a and T, Alcorn State in the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. That's at noon Eastern, followed by the Las Vegas Bowl. Fresno State, the Mountain West champs, great year for Jeff Tedford. They take on Herm Edwards and Arizona State in the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl. Both of these schools have teams headed to bowls. Houston is in the Armed Forces Bowl against Army LSU will play UCF and try to end the night's two-year-long win streak. And just from talking to the people from LSU, the people around their program the last couple of days, I think that the LSU is excited about going to play UCF. So that's going to be fun. It's in the Fiesta Bowl, part of the New Year's Six. You know the last team to beat UCF in football? This is a good tell your friends trivia question. Um, 
I, I would not be able to tell my friends. I know it's been a long time. Arkansas State in the 2016 Cure Bowl. Houston is claiming that uh, we had the wrong free throw shooter there. That's the reason for the check. It is Nas Reed at the line, however. And right when, when LSU needed hit a low, needed a little bit of scoring punch, Nas Reed is showing back up. Gets them both. It's a one-point game. Brooks guarded again by Smart. Hinton goes at Waters. Williams got a piece. Loose ball. Grabbed by Javante Smart. And Davis, Corey Davis, with four minutes, four and a half minutes, is at the table. Thrown away by Edwards. Here is Robinson turbocharging. And the finish hit. Hit the deck hard, no foul. Houston leads by three. Waters goes at Robinson and rolls it home. Tremont Waters. Don't, 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 don't leave to go use the restroom. Don't leave to go get any juice or soda. We're going to have a nice little finish here, ladies and gentlemen. Take the remote and put it somewhere you can't find it until this thing ends. Brady. Williams thought he went straight up. He's called for a foul. Brady to the line, Davis to the game when we return. And the, the, the Cougars in transition. Defense leading the offense. Robinson coming down, creating for his team. Right back the other way, Tremont Waters. I got an answer for you, baby. Kelvin Sampson took over a Houston program that was down. 13 and 19 his first year, NIT births, leading to an NCAA tournament spot last year. 27 and 8, lost in the American title game by one. Won a game against San Diego State in the tournament. They're one of nine unbeatens remaining in the country. They're favored in just about every remaining game. And this is the start of a seven game homestand. This was the toughest one for Houston statistically. Since they did a road game at Temple in a month, and they trailed by 15, but have come all the way back to take the lead. And you know what I like about those graphics we just showed? They showed Coach Sampson in various phases and stages <laughs> of, of, of being dressed. Yeah. You know, he, had, he had several different looks going on right there. And so I, I guess, you know, when you're as good of a coach as he, and right there you see him, just relax. One one more button may come loose before tonight's over. Um, you know, but when you're as good as he is, it doesn't matter how you dress. Your Kel teams are going to play off. Kelvin Sampson, various stages of dress, will be making its debut at the MoMA shortly. <laughs> Brady hits both. Houston leads by three. Corey Davis Jr. is back in the game for the first time since picking up his fourth foul at the 18-22 mark. Waters a long three. Williams on the offensive glass. He's fouled. Brady was in there with Alley. And the foul, if it's on Brady, would be his fifth. It's on Brady. And it is indeed. So Brady has fouled out with 320 to go. You know, and as we come down the stretch here, there, there are two things to look at, I think. I think that which, which one of the point guards, and, I, and I'm talking about Tremont Waters for LSU and Galen Robinson for Houston. Which one can impose their will on these last three points? And then following up, following that is when that shot, when the shots go up, which team is going to dominate the boards? That I think that's those are the keys to coming down um, to the to the end of the game. Right now, Houston is a plus 11 on the boards. You know, we have a two-point game. Let's see what plus mine is what these last 320 end up being. Because I think that the, the, the point guard play and then who can control the boards coming down the end here will determine 
the outcome of this game. Emmett Williams got the first. The five-star freshman tucks in the jersey before the second. Quiet night for Williams offensively with his three, but he hits both. Robinson, Davis, Brooks, White, and Gresham, the five for Houston. Robinson, Brooks, got smart in the air, and he delivers a three. Can I say it again? Galen Robinson, just give him the ball. The old hammer play, penetration on one side, a nice little screen. Baseline pass the opposite corner. Reed way off on an attempted answer, but last touch by Houston. The assist, Robinson's sixth. Penetration on one side. They call it a hammer screen on the opposite side. Brooks does a good job of showing them, giving a little pump fake. Boom. Nothing in the first half. Feeding off of Robinson here in the second half. Here we go again. Got smart in the air again, and Brooks missed it this time. Offensive rebound, Gresham. Robinson on the deck alongside Mays, picked up by Smart for LSU. Bodies everywhere. Both of these teams want to win, baby. Smart missed it. Good seal out by Gresham. And Houston can slow the pace. Closing in on two to play. Winners of 21 in a row in their home buildings. Slow the pace, someone's gonna come set an on ball for Robinson and let him play ball. It's Gresham with the screen. The drive for White, smothered by Williams in absolute rejection. Skyler Mays with a quiet second half. Mays, Smart, Reed, Waters, and Williams. Smart into Gresham, well defended. Last touch by Gresham. Galen Robinson wants a review with a minute 39 to go. And the officials will indeed look at this. Galen's doing, doing his job, doing the official's job. He was not going to stop rotating that index finger <laughs> until Ted Valentine went to the monitor. The call is off of Houston. Last touch smart is the question. It's 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 hard to tell right there. I don't know whether that evidence right there is strong enough to overturn the call on the court, which is off Houston. Is there a touch there as well? That's There's the second definitely part a of touch this. there. The question is, does Williams get his hand in there? Oh, Whoa. right there. Now. Now they've stayed with the call on the court, the officials, and it will be LSU ball. Okay. That was a quick review. Okay. The officials determining there wasn't enough indisputable evidence to overturn the call. I, I, I'll say again. Okay. <laughs> Leave it at that. Waters guarded by Robinson. A step back. Rattled around a three. Bodies on the ground. Foul against Evan Williams of LSU. Tonight, Scott Van Pelt has Sports Center. After the big showdown between the Raptors and Warriors, Tim Legler will break it down. Is Toronto built to beat Golden State? How about the Denver Nuggets top three in the West? Their coach Mike Malone joins SVP, whose one big thing is a question of whether or not the CFP should expand to eight, 1 a.m. Eastern, midnight Central, Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Fabian White, two shots. No on the first. And you see that last possession down there. Waters on Robinson. Missed shot, rebound. That's what it's going to come down to. That matchup and then the rebound. Houston trail by as much as 15 in this second half. The Cougs lead by five. 120 and change to play. 
Smart on the fumble back from Reed. Reed will take it and bank it in over Fabian White. Timeout will wait. Second half here. Brooks, who was quiet in the first half, got Houston going, got them back in this game. They were down 15. Then all of a sudden, Brooks warmed up, gave the, 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 the Cougars some life, gave the crowd some life. He got them started. And then Fabian White has been all over the place. Defense leading the offense. The freshman hitting on the breakout right there. The Cougars just keep coming at you. That, 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 that toughness, that hard knows it -ness, if that is a word. You know, they're always, it's always Sure, says there. the Ivy League educated gentleman to my right. I'm versatile, baby. I can, I can <laughs> mix it up any kind of way. Hard I, did, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't want to go over the Syracuse grad's head right there. Right. Oh, so sure. I stuck with hard nose it -ness. Yeah, you had eight months <laughs> off from doing games, and the best you came up with was hard nose it -ness. I appreciate that. As I said, I didn't want you to be uncomfortable, buddy. Well, that ship has sailed, my friend. <laughs> Good to be back with you this year. Robinson, and that's going to be a blocking foul against Mays, who tried to draw an offensive foul. Galen Robinson to the line. Both teams, of course, in the double bonus. That could have gone a lot of different ways. Is that an F for sure. maybe an offensive foul or F for maybe a no call in your vantage point? Uh, probably, personally, probably would have been a no call right there. Well, obviously, but, but, I, the first. but I can't argue that. I mean, it's, that, that could have gone. That could have been an offensive foul, a defensive foul, or a no call. White is out of the game for Houston. Hinton and Gresham in. Robinson second, and he got it. It's a two possession game. This is sort of the reverse scenario of LSU's game against Florida State where the Tigers had to come down or beg your pardon or up late in the game. Florida State came back. They're down four with under a minute here. Reed out of control got it back to Waters. And a tough shooting night. Off the glass, no rebounded by Brooks. Do you foul? Play it out, play it out. Houston calls timeout. 35.8 on the game clock, 20 to shoot. Now the one risk you run if you play it out, if Houston scores, that's is a six point game with 15, 20 seconds left. Of course, if you foul, it's an automatic two free throws from here on out. Yeah, and, 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 and Houston looked a little disheveled right there. You know, well, they, they may have forced something. I think I think Coach Sampson saw that, which is why we got the timeout that we have right now. Now, obviously, both teams have been in the double bonus for quite some time now. So, as you just said, if, with, with any foul, you're going to the line twice. Then you have, you know, primary ball handler like Robinson who just, just went one for two. Um, you know, so, and the ball is going to be in his hands. So maybe you do take that chance right there. This is the list right here. These are the lone remaining zero loss teams. Kansas and Michigan and Virginia, no surprise. Nevada survived a stiff test from Arizona State a few days back. Texas Tech off to a great start. Buffalo and Furman surprises to some. St. John's out of the Big East. And right now the class of the American Athletic Conference, these Houston Cougars, 21 straight home wins. 8-0 for the first time since 1969-70. They don't have a terribly difficult non-conference schedule. They beat Oregon, who was ranked at the time. They won at Oklahoma State on Saturday. And they are trying to get another power conference team down. Robinson will inbound. Gets it to Brooks, and Brooks is immediately fouled. They got it to who they wanted to get it to. Devontae Smart with the foul. Brooks, who is such a great three-point shooter, is only 9 of 16 at the line this year. 
He has not appeared there tonight. There you go. You know, what you have to do right here is, is Houston has to be careful. They're so aggressive in crashing the board. You, you know, you don't want, if he misses, to pick up an unnecessary foul going after the offensive rebound right now. You want LSU to burn some time off the clock. Oh, Brooks missed both. Waters on the drive, and Robinson fouled him on the floor. Robinson reached in. Tremont Waters will shoot two with the clock deadened at 28.7. Now, stay in the obvious. That's what you don't want if you do some two missed foul shots. A quick, and then a quick foul down the other end. Giving LSU a chance to score with the time with the clock stopped. Waters is the first one, three-point game, 28.7. Tremont Waters is in so many big shots already for LSU. Michigan, Texas A&M, some game winners last year. Two free throws here, it's a two-point game. We're a long way from home. Robinson to inbound with Taylor guarding the pass. Got to get open. Davis has got to get open. There he is. Davis double team and a blocking foul against Taylor sends Davis to the line. Now, you know, it was dangerous right there. Davis's teammates anticipated the foul right there. He caught the ball in the deep corner. You know, that's not where you want to catch, but sometimes you have to go there. And then his teammates just stood watched. They were lucky to get that block called right there. He's getting trapped. You have to abandon the play and find the open area and get open. Is that what Kelvin Sampson's saying to Brooks right now, you think? No, he's saying relax. Those foul shots are over. Next play. Brooks is still mad at himself because he's two missed foul shots. Davis second in the conference in free throw shooting now 20 of 22. This makes it a two score game. Doesn't need a three. Go to the basket. He takes one anyway. Ill-advised shot. Rebounded by Brooks. Gets it in the hands of their best free throw shooter, Davis. You know, and I said right there he doesn't need a three. But at the same time, he is a good three-point shooter. That's not necessarily a bad shot for him. Even from that deep? That, that's not deep for him. Again, he's hit big shots in his short LSU career. Misfire there leads to this. Davis has hit three in a row. Another sellout here in the Fertitta Center, 7,000 plus, and just about every one of them is standing. Six point game. Waters. Rebounded by Davis. LSU chooses not to foul. If you don't know, now you know. 22 in a row at home for Houston. The Cougars remain unbeaten. And we talked in the opening about those seniors. Davis, who sits on the bench for most of the second half, comes in, makes his foul shots, gets a big rebound. That's what seniors do. Don't lose sight of this team, folks. The Houston Cougars, 9-0 off a 27-win year. They take down LSU. Kelvin Sampson has another. Time for Sports Center. John Anderson and Kevin Connors take it away.